Hey everyone, this is Bob Dietrich with the Unleash AI for Business Summit, and I'm here with Cassandra Cassandra Keel. Um, she's with the Growth Guild community that she created herself. She is an ADHD or just like us, and we are talking about ADHD and AI today, and how ADHDers can use AI to overcome some of their challenges like procrastination and overwhelm and, and, you know, not starting or, or not finishing projects, you know, all these things that we can struggle with uh, when we're trying to get that paper done, that email done, that, that book done, those, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do, even research. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about not just chat GBT, you probably heard about that, but we're also going to talk about something called pickaxe. And so Cassandra, welcome today to the program. Thank you, Bob. I am so happy to be here. I've watched so many summits with you, so it's yeah. an honor to finally jump on screen. So yeah. let's kick it off. Yeah, fantastic. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, but before we do, um, Cassandra, tell us a little bit about yourself and the Growth Community Guild. What is it? And and I know you um, uh, have ADHD as well, and that you, you've managed it. And you can tell us maybe a little bit of, uh, about that. And then we'll jump right into some of these, uh, some of the tools that we're going to use um, and we're going to show people today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Bob. So sure. I was found my refound my ADHD midlife as a entrepreneur, multi-passionate, multi-business owner. Um, and so, you know, it's a real struggle. So I certainly emphasize with everybody here. And I actually, what I address with ADHD is something I call high achiever stress disorder. Cause I find so many of us as entrepreneurs and, um, you know, ambitious individuals, um, the high Achiever stress disorder really affects our life. So real quickly, I'll just give a couple of stats, which a lot of us probably maybe already know, but entrepreneurs have an increase of 300% of ADHD. We have a shortened lifespan of 13 years because of comorbidities and stress. So my purpose for being here today is to really show us how we can use these new tools with AI and also help them elevate our business. Mm, yeah, such good information. And, and to keep in mind that when we manage our ADHD, we don't have that shortened lifespan. But when yeah. we don't, we we uh, the stats show that we can really have a um, uh, struggle with that and a shorter life in general. So great to know. Um, we're here about AD, uh, ADHD and AI today. Um, Let's talk about that. I I know I I've used ChatGBT, which is a a chatbot. It's a AI. It's not the robots and you know the robotic version of AI. It's the software version. And I know I love it for getting unstuck. If I have an idea that I want to uh, that I have that I want to uh, nurture or research or get ideas on or maybe an outline on, I know it will do that. Um, but you have another program called um, called Pickaxe. And can you tell us a little bit about how these two programs are similar and how Pickaxe might be a little more uh, robust and, and important for ADHDers to understand and use? Yeah, it's, you know, I love ChatGBT. I think most of us start on ChatGBT. I was one of the first users and, um, you know, I, I use it still every day. But when I started to learn about prompt engineering and how easy it really can be, not only do I use it for my neurodiversity and helping me complete projects and be more in tune with simplifying things in my personal life, but I'm also setting up processes for ambitious entrepreneurs to also now use it to productize their own genius in their life and their business. So there's ChatGPT and then Pickaxe. Now, Pickaxe actually uses the back end of OpenAI, which is ChatGPT and now ChatGPT4. So it's an interface that runs on the back end, but gives a really nice intuitive process for entrepreneurs to use in prompting. Got it, got it. So, so basically Pickaxe is, is connected to ChatGPT and uses chat GBT, but it gives you more features. What are some of the features that it gives you? Like how, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want me to show you the back yeah, end? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. let's let's see the screens. That's that was that's the yeah. way to learn. We're visual, right? Yes, exactly. We're definitely visual. 
Well, this is my motherboard, so I'm not going to try to overwhelm you, but this is pickaxe and I'll show you kind of how mm -hmm. uh, it can kind of transfer over into seeing it more easily. So you can see on the left side here, Bob, these are all of the different prompts that I've made. Everything from a seven day drip funnel to, um, to a bot that will make you laugh to the first project that I did, which was a seven day mindful planner. So I had mentioned to you that I started solving my own problems and that was making myself accountable to just finishing my projects every week. Cause I have multiple things going on. Right. So I created this in pickaxe and you can see here, this is amazing as a entrepreneur. Now that is helping other people with this, I can see how many unique viewers I have, how many prompt runs there are. And get this, Bob, I can also see everybody's inputs as someone that, that runs the, the chat bot, I can, or the prompt um, piece here that I can see what people are struggling with so that I can better understand my consumer. Okay, so let's, let's um, back up a bit. So, and just kind of get on the same page. So prompt is just the input, right? It's what you type in to get a result. And then the uh, result is the result that that is, is given. Now I want to share my screen real quick. And I wanna, yeah, I want to show um, everyone. Uh, this is chat GBT right here, right? This is chat GBT. This is what it looks like when you use chat GPT and on the left side are, these aren't prompts really. The, these are, well, they're prompts uh, um, and uh, there are chats that we had, right? Chats with prompts and results, right? So if you look at, up here, you know, I typed in a, uh, a prompt and it gave me a result. I typed in a prompt and gave me a result, right? Now, when you go back, if you would share your screen again, if you go back to pickaxe, is, are you doing the same thing there? Are you typing in a prompt and then it gives a result? Is that what we're talking about or? Absolutely. Okay. So if you look at the back end, mm -hmm. and now you can see my prompt. So this is my prompt. This is what I want you to do. You have a background of neuroscience, ADHD, human behavior, and teaching mindfulness and mm -hmm. executive function skills. Mm -hmm. And then the prompt, this is how you, you get the solution, but this is how I built the back end of the prompt. Down here, you can see that's where I say, okay, uh, this is where I put user input. So that's where the user then will input their data. So you can see here, now when you're using ChatGPT, what you're not seeing in the background is there's even more things that you can go through. And I'm not gonna go through these because it's a little bit more advanced, but this is how you can create more creativity, create longer outputs, things of that nature. So you can see here, Bob, here is the, you know, tells them what to do. And then here's the prompt. So when you are prompting, you're literally just asking them for what you need. And then as the entrepreneur that now productizes all of my prompts, and I use them as processes to help someone get from point A to point Z in whether it's a method that I create in a program or what have you. Now mm -hmm. you'll see this is working in the back end. This is chat GBT four that's responding. Now chat GBT takes a little bit longer with four versus three, but mm -hmm. you can see that's how it works in the back Got end. It. Got it. So when I look over to the left and I'm looking at your prompt, right? It says, I want you to only respond in a supportive, fun, conversational tone, et cetera, right? Um, is that whole paragraph, the prompt, and then what's below it between each day, create a space that divides each day. Is that part of the prompt too, or is that the output? So that's a really great question, Bob. This right here, the more that you can feed the back end in examples, the more it will have an idea of how it can provide the best solutions for your ah, problem. So if you don't put this in, it may not say day one, day two, day three, and it might not start with day one focus and clarity. You already know you want five days or something, six days, whatever it is. And, um, and you want number one to be focused and clarity, number two to prioritize the schedule, and you want it to add to it, right? Not and exactly, no? not exactly. So it'll give an example, but it may not give that exact, okay, you need to give focus and clarity. Uh -huh. um, like I, I, I did humanitarian project. So I gave a project for creating you know, a retreat center, but asked for something that created a water restoration and it gave me the correct data on water restoration. 
action, not necessarily what I told it as the example. So the example is on the right side, you can see now it told me it did what I told it to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, so it has one priority task, one objective and one action going back to ADHD. Do not yeah. tell me all these things to do. Give me one thing a day to do and then help me get to day seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So in, on the left is the prompt on the right is the output at the bottom is the input of, of, uh, uh, certain data that you might want yep. that, that can help it even more. Yeah. And the better you are as a prompt engineer, anybody can learn how to do this, Bob. And this is the point of us doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Variability temperature, the higher it is, it just means the more flexible it's going to be. Think about creating a domain name for a website. You'll yeah. have a wacky name versus, you know, prompt engineer, you have prompt me, you know, so yeah. that's that's basically how you can test that. So what I'm learning here, because uh, I'm learning with everyone else, right? And mm -hmm. so hopefully I'm being the voice of the people who are watching this. If you could go back to that screen real quick. Um, mm -hmm. So this whole thing that we are, are uh, we're looking at this this here is uh, basically a prompt. It's a long prompt. I, a lot of my prompts are short, right? I'm realizing, mm -hmm. hey, I got to give more data. I kind of got that after a while, but. Um, but you, you put in a lot of data and you gave some structure and it produced some data with some structure, right? Now, what I also love is that, yes, I'm glad you went back here because it, it looks like there's a whole list of different um, types of prompts that other people have created and you can actually use these prompts. Can you also copy them and modify them or how does that yeah, work? Yeah, that's, that's a really great point. I love that you asked that. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just gonna show you I created this, this had more space between it, but then it kind of puts it all back together. But mm -hmm. when you put a solution, when you say, hi, now this is the executive function brain bot. I wanted a bot that would help me orchestrate a project and put all the gaps together in the executive function, there's seven. And it would help me just finish the project and also educate me on what area of executive function that was a little bit weak. And then it, it personally supports me. Right. Why, why so did now, you put the word hi in there to start? Oh, let's create a symphony. Say hi to start. Okay. Hi. Okay. Yep. So you want to start it off and then it'll start the conversation. Right. Okay. Based on the prompt you had. Yep. So it says, Hey, I'm excited. Now this is another, just really quick. This is a chat bot, not just a prompt. So this will be a fluid conversation, which is different than what we just did. Right. So let's go into your, your question that you had asked me. Now, if I go to next step here, well, what are the next step? What can you do with it? So first and foremost, I believe that every person has a gift and a genius. It's one of the um, programs I teach about how to get into flow and how to find your entrepreneur element, which your guests are going to get free access to actually. And so when you understand your unique gifts, you can take your ideas and you can productize your genius. It's what I teach in my seven day accelerator. So mm -hmm. when you look over here, here are your tool assets. You can categorize where, you know, what category it is. You can have it private, meaning you can put it behind a paywall or have it as a private access to just test it. You can make it unlisted or you can make it public. I can also clone it meaning if I have a program or I have a bunch of authors that need this tool or I want a private label for other people, I can then make it clonable and charge people or give it to them for free where they can use my exact backend engineered bot programmed. Got it, got it, okay. So can you go back to the list of the- the, the Absolutely. Yeah, the dashboard. So. So the first thing uh, you know, I notice here, if I now that I know a little bit about this, and everybody else will kind of notice as well, is that these are pre-made uh, prompts that people have spent a lot of time on, and that you, if these you are my prompts. Oh, these are your prompts. Okay. If I have a problem, I want to just take it out once. Uh -huh. I go create a prompt, uh -huh. and then I solve my problem, and I just go back and use my prompts over and over again. So Instagram, Facebook stories. So it'll create the entire 
caption for me with AI. So you can see this is the output. And then it gives me all the emojis. It gives me the education, the call to action, the challenge. It starts, you know, this whole thing is one that I created. Now, are they available um, in a in a general store where in for pub you know for public use where you know there's yours and everybody else's in pickaxe? Because you know we saw the dashboard. Is there a public dashboard now? Super good question. Pickaxe has anybody that puts them public you can find them here. So you will be able to um, look at other people's prompts. Um, you can see here, um, this is my four part seed sequence. So I create a whole neuroscience messaging system behind how to create your prompt. Mm -hmm. And then I put the neuroscience behind it to then you know, monetize it and share it even with the seven day drip email. Mm -hmm. So you can see now, here's what I want to show you, Bob, is that this is my private label. So you can see here, nobody really knows where it's coming from, but it is my IP that I put together that I sell in my program that you can float this on other websites. And then what I'm currently now, let me expand that even further. With these, well, hold on before you say before you move on. When you, what do you mean by float this on other websites? So this is an HTML. Mm -hmm. So this is Notion. Now keep in mind, Notion now has AI. So uh, if I wanted to yeah. use, I, I don't think a lot of people know what Notion is. Notion is a um, basically it's a program where you can you can create notes, data management create schedules. So it's kind of like a front facing um, Google document that's empty and you can create something blank, but then it also gives you this whole list of options where you can create different things just in Notion, which is a template builder. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, before we go too far, I, I, what I'd like to do is, is get uh, see where, where are those, where do you find those public pickaxe prompts and 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 another thing is can you can you take a pickaxe prompt and paste it into chat gpt let me show you so here's the different examples of um pickaxe prompts now i don't know for sure um as far as where all of them are for sure um okay but, but at least you have yours that you've created and then I'm sure you can share them with other people and stuff. So, yeah. So they're, they're kind of here. So there's a list here. Okay. That's a, that's a list of different 10 pickaxes. Yeah. So these are all different pickaxes from different people. Uh-huh. Oh, and they got the numbers of, of downloads next to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mid journey yep. prompt writer. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people want to use that one. Okay, good. Now, ChatGBT, if you understand, and, and we had gone through this and how I created, now, if you go back to ChatGBT, and this is where I started, is I actually created my first prompt in ChatGBT. And I don't know if you know about, um, we won't go too into it, but my interface will look different than yours because I use AI RPM for ChatGPT. Yeah, so these are also prompts. Got it. I was using that too. And, and, and I found that it was overwhelmed for me. So I disconnected yeah. it and just wanted to understand chat GBT first. Now I can go back to chat, uh, right. AI, um, PRM. And but you can see here, these are the prompts that I started and this has 3000 impressions, 19,000 and 27 thumbs up. And this is my original template. Now, what I did is I, to learn pickaxe, I took my template from here and I put it into pickaxe to see if it would have equal output. And it did, but I just like pickaxe because it's a lot easier. And to your point, I just need one prompt at a time so I can stay focused on what I'm doing versus being everywhere on chat GPT. Interesting. You know, I could totally see where this is starting to head is that you know, it's just like Facebook, you know, you post on Facebook. It's like, the, these are my, these are my prompts. If you want my prompts, you know, you, 
have to subscribe to my channel like a, like YouTube or whatever. And yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, like this is the, so this is back in notion. So this is that seven day mindful planner and you can see how I embedded it in this notion. So it's, it's ADHD made so that it's very visual so that your executive function can externalize your week. Mm -hmm. And then that seven day mindful planner, what that gives you, then what you do is right away, you then and go and put it into these little things and make sure that you schedule it into your week right away. And then it also has a meditation and, and things of that nature. So that's how I then, again, how can I use it every week? And then I just multiplied it so other people can use it. Here's what I want to warn people with ADHD is because we love to get in the high beta brain. And this is what I did to start with. And I had to reverse what I was doing. I created this entire output. All of these are chat GBT um, prompts. Every single one of them has this much information. And I spent so much time on this. And you know what, Bob, I went back to this because I needed one prompt for one tool at a time. So this is what I wanted to say about when we're have ADHD, we want it, we want to play with it all, but doing this all day will not finish your project. It will overwhelm your nervous system more. And this is really exciting time, but this is why I'm taking a mental health approach to everything that I create so that we, we were mindful of how much time we're spending in this creative zone, right? We need to finish things and make sure we're taking care of our mental health. Understood. Okay. So, um, so let's say I'm a person with ADHD and I'm saying, you know what? I just found chat GBT. I mean, it's, it's basically all I've got to start to figure out how to input there. And then you start throwing pickaxe in there. I'm like, you know, how am I going to use that? I mean, I'm like so far beyond that. What what do you say to people like that as far as, um, the, you know, moving forward uh, in the best, most effective way for them? Oh, man, there's, there's so much, right? So mm -hmm. when we go back to where we started um, with high achiever stress disorder, it's just really important to know ourselves, right? So to know yourself before you start a product project, or before you jump into chat GBT is to know, are you in the objective mind where you want to start and finish a project and you want it to work for you? Or are you in the creative mind where you just want to play? So first and foremost, know what you're entering in with so that you don't go down all these rabbit holes, right? Um, the second is to know how much time you're going to spend when you jump into chat GPT, because we are hunter types we're wired for survival and entrepreneur is a modern day world of survival. We're trained to be creative and see things that other people don't see. And we have all of our neural networks, right? So I would say first and foremost, Bob, is to start to know what is your objective and then start slow, start playing a little bit with chat GPT, try to stretch yourself a little bit, listen to YouTube. There's so many different YouTube channels, but if anybody wants support, honestly, reach out to me. I'd be happy to walk you through these systems and how to best use them for someone that's neurodiverse. Right. How long have you been using chat GPT? And, and, and these AI products. Yeah. So I've been in the web three space. I have, you know, the seed coin and the tokenized communities. And so I get access to all this stuff and I jump right in. I mean, I literally call the, pre, you know, producers of these projects and I try to help them build their business and I get in feedback with them. So I've been doing this for a year and a half um, with AI and so I started when none of these products were all shiny and new. And so I learned the fundamentals first. And now, you know, right now I'm creating chat GBT integrated healing immersive um, ecosystems where you can speak and then the back end AI chat GBT um, will create a, a scene. So I'm looking at VR and nature scenes that are ran by AI that provide music that's created by AI, 
this is going to be our future. So I'm really trying to up the ante on the mental health industry and how we can use it to make us better humans versus, you know, take jobs away and, and scare us. This is really an incredible time for us to be involved because in order to evolve, we have to be involved and we have to do what's right for each of us and how we apply these tools. Now, would you say somebody new to ChatGPT and AI can uh, uh, should be or could be using your solutions that you presented today, or is there a more simplistic place they uh, you would recommend they start? Absolutely. Um, so I do believe you know I'm going to be sharing the flow uh, frequency assessment, which will help you with understanding your entrepreneur type. Um, you will get access to my seven day mindful planner for free. And you will also get access to the seven day um, flow operating system in notion. And it puts you into the back end of the community so that you can be supported. You can walk through these processes and have me and a community that's growing to really ask questions. Um, the other um, offerings that I have are just on my Twitter feed. I mean, I give free prompts away every day or on Facebook. Um, so everybody will be able to kind of find my assets there and everything I try to keep very simple with one clean, clear action step. And so you can get from start to finish within five minutes or less. Wonderful. Okay. So, so, um, from a standpoint of where they, where you would recommend they start, you would say that maybe it would be somewhere more like, um, uh, chat GBT and, and maybe yes. working with or learning from someone like yourself that, um, uh, that, that would show them, uh, give, maybe give them the prompts and then eventually learn how to write them themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just start with examples from other people. Use other people's prompts because you really get an idea of how, how can you birth your creative genius and use them to help other people, right? We're either solving our own problems or we're productizing our genius to help other people solve that problem. And that's where any entrepreneur starts, right? So what started as I needed a planner, now is a full ecosystem and planning program process for people to help them with their executive function and finish their projects so that they can finish them and have a prosperous life. You know, it's interesting. I was working with uh, prompt writing for speeches, right? I'm in Toastmasters mm -hmm. and, and they do five to seven minute speeches and, uh, and they, they do all sorts of speeches, vocal variety, you know, using gestures and um, prom, uh, um, prompts, props and things like that. Yeah. And um, what I noticed was that I had two choices as I was writing the prompt. The first choice was I could write one prompt that would spit out the whole speech, right? And give me a five to seven minute speech. And everything was there, right? Um, and then if it didn't give me everything, then I go back and I take that prompt. I would erase the thing that was wrong, put the new, put something else in there and kind of play with it until it gave me the result I wanted. And then I found that if I took out the topic and put a different topic in it, do something similar, right? So sound like a good strategy for one prompt. The other thing I found was that I could also create prompts on different segments of the speech, different parts of the speech. So like the opening or the, the call to action at the end, or maybe the three parts in the middle, or maybe um, research on the speech before I created the speech or all sorts of different things, topics based on things I like to do, right? I can put in, these are all the things I like to do. This is my experience. Can you tell me what speeches I'd be good at, you know, giving... TED Talks about or something like that, right? Um, I've noticed that your speeches, I mean, your uh, prompts were all written in the format of one prompt to to, to um, display a one big result, right? Mm -hmm. How would you recommend people um, working with ChatGPT? Would you recommend them trying to create one prompt with one big result? Or would you, would you recommend them trying to create little pieces of it until they get those right and then start to build on that? Yeah, I think that's a, I really love your story because mm -hmm. it, it really um, gave an idea and a visual of the big picture of, okay, this is what I want this experience in my speech to be about. But 
How do you start the hook, right? What are those three parts of the body that is storytelling? And that's what I do in my um, seed sequence is story. I have a storytelling prompt that helps you put in your story, but then it evokes the five different sensory systems and how human behavior engages with story. So that's just an example of how you can piecemeal each part together. Mm -hmm. So I think you start with one prompt because when you understand and you get the results that you want on that one prompt, and then you go to the executive function bot that I showed you, we're going to be moving into more chat bots. And why? Why, why is that? Because as humans, we're conversational. Mm -hmm. And I can literally, as a clinical hypnotherapist and does energy medicine as well, mm -hmm. I can feel the energy moving between me and the prompt or me and the chat bot. And we're building this thread, right? It builds that momentum. So start with the prompt, get the effects that you want, then learn how to build the chat bot, which then says, um, you know, here's an input, here's the output. Okay, once they give that output and they're happy, here's another input, and then here's the output. So master of prompting first, learn the iterative process, then move into the more dynamic pieces. Got it. Master the whole prompt and then move into the pieces versus, yep. versus mastering the pieces and then putting them together into a master prompt. Um, you can, well, it's, it's both and right. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're looking at a speech, um, there are all different types of the speech and to give you a visual in five seconds, um, you could do Bob is, you know, this is the seven day email campaign. So you can put, you know, each of those specific questions, here as your one big prompt. Mm -hmm. So you could create one big prompt and just in the, in the back end, you can see that these are the elements that the person has to then put in there. So as a prompt creator, what you would do is you would do, okay, here's the hook of the prompt. And then that's where the person would put the input in so that by the time that they're done with this prompt, they have their full speech. So you've just piecemealed it together for them. And you can see down here, again, here's an example. Please use this example. Da, 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 da. And it has them put in how they say hi in the email and how they close each email. And then each email builds on what you're gonna learn tomorrow. And AI just figures it all out for me and puts it in this beautiful conversational nurture sequence. So if you basically get emails from people uh, that you're following and you love their emails, you could actually copy and paste their emails into your prompt and say, hey, um, here's an example of what I want my mind to sound like and put this information in there and it'll just rewrite the whole thing and uh, create some killer copy for you. That's how a lot of people are doing this. And I will say, if I get inspired, um, I will just go to chat GBT and I will play around with it. Now we need to be ethical. We can't take other people's work and build it and go charge money for it, mm -hmm. but we can be inspired. And we see this people doing this all the time. I need you to be in the tone and language of, um, their favorite author or Elon Musk. Right. Um, that's, that's a great way that you can take the best studious, proven concepts and you know they call it the past sequence for marketing okay take this and put it in this framework for pushing their pain drawing them in and giving them the cta there's all different ways that you can program the back end you want to do it ethically but absolutely take your inspiration and go make a prompt out of it that's a lot of how these all inspired me and then i just go and put my personal touch to it wow that's it Mm -hmm. All right. Well, they, they do call it swipe copy for a reason. They and, do. Uh, <laughs> and you know All what? Right. Nothing <laughs> is repeated twice. Everything is just remade in our own essence and the own, our own way that we see it in the world. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, this has been uh, quite an enlightening experience. And if you, um, if you're out there and you have ADHD and you're feeling like you've got something out of this, uh, you can join Cassandra. She's got um, a, a special 
uh, gift that she's given you. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. It's it's truly an honor to um, offer it. Um, so what you'll get is access to the community. Um, and what I walk you through is a very simple test assessment. Uh, you'll learn which of the four entrepreneur types you are so that you can kind of learn what area in your business you are strongest in so that you can really take these tools that we're giving you and know where to focus them. And then you'll also get access to the flow operating system, which is this device here and the tools for AI to help you organize your, your week with um, chat GPT prompted by pickaxe. So you'll get all that. And then um, you'll have access to our community that's growing with passionate entrepreneurs like you growing in the new world of AI, because it ain't going anywhere, my friends. Again, either you get involved to evolve or you just stand on the sideline. And I don't think any of your viewers want to do that. So, Or des dissolved. <laughs> there you All go. Right. Well, thank you so much. This was a, a, a wonderful uh, conversation and uh, we're happy to have you here. Oh, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Make sure anybody reaches out if you have any questions. Great. And uh, thank you all for joining us on this episode of the Unleash AI for Business Summit. We will see you on the next episode.